if you want to check the progression of the vata recta by before reaching into the stage of the distraction you have to give some drugs which will be immunomodulatory and the drugs which will be immunoregulatory i underline the word immunoregulatory which will be able to prevent the excessive autoimmune destruction and that is why the drugs like guduji sadavari ashwagandha etc are having more role in the vata recta samprapti vigartana and let us remember guduji vata recta is the single drug mentioned by acharya so immunoregulatory and autoimmune suppression is also important so think about such a possibility in vata recta let us remember prevention of further kriya galas will reduce the possibilities of severe joint destruction very important prevention of further kriya gala will produce will reduce the possibility this is the area where ayurveda and avatar has to give a key focus and ayurvedic rheumatology is not giving analgesics but preventing further joint destruction that is the important message of this concept now coming to the last domain that is vata recta diagnosis based on dosha domination till now we discussed how to diagnose vata recta in the clinical stage uttana gambira now let me move into the second area where how you can diagnose by doshas specific doshaja pattern in different cases mixed patterns are also seen in the clinical practice vigalpa samprapti is an effective tool i will tell you a vata dominant vata recta how it will look like in practice it is clear that vade adige adiga tatra shula spurana todanam shobasya raushya krishnatvam shavada vritti hanaya that vritti hana indicates the fluctuation of the joint swelling thamanya anguli sandinam sangoja angagraha the angagraha is nothing other than the morning stiffness mentioned in the diagnostic criteria of arthritis you know the morning stiffness which is lasting for more than 30 minutes is an indication of the diagnosis of arthritis in the modern medicine and damanya anguli sandinam sangoja angagraha is very much similar to that and finally he is giving one more clue she is Sidastam, Sidastam, Sidadvesha, Anubashiyo, Stampa, Vepadu, Suttaya. The patient will be aggravating all the complaints when we are going to give Sito Pachara. So, these are the Vada dominant complaints of Vada Rekta. More painful joints, swelling is fluctuating, blackish dry swelling, pain with Anguli Sandhi, Angadraha, Stipina, Sand, Sita, Anubashiya are the cardinal features. and this is the acute interphalangeal joint what i am telling is the damanyanguli sandinam sangoja etc is nothing other than this particular picture and again you can see the symmetry of ra on same fingers of left and right hand you can see bilaterally symmetrical nature of ayurveda of a joint is also applicable to our science and coming to the pittadiga vada recta see here there is an importance pittadiga vada recta will be having systemic and local clinical features systemic features like pitte vidaga samoha sveda murcha madasatr sparsha kshamatam rugraga shofa paaka prashoshmada let us salute babada who cardinal feature who pictureized the cardinal features of inflammation sensoris back rubber calor pallor dolor we tell that inflammation he is telling rug raga shofa paaka prashoshmada rug means pain raga means irithima and daha means burning and prashoshmada is the local body temperature so all the clinical feature this prashoshmada is tenderness patient is not at all ready to touch the unaffected joint because tenderness will be there and all the clinical features of pittadiga vada recta include systemic features along with local joint features so that is another important area and coming to the rectadiga vada recta very much important in treatment domain because resembles the pittaja spectrum so far more severe pain red copper is skin because it is clearly mentioned uh, recte adiga recte shofo adirishtoda tamras chimichimayate that tamras chimichimayate indicating the burning pain and another important point is nigda rushai samam neidi kandu kleda samannida in rectadiga vada recta the patient will never get the response to the snigda chikitsa and the rusha chikitsa and that is the important diagnostic clue you have to switch over to the recta motion chikitsa and that is the fundamental condition where recta motion is indicated any disease where snigda adi chikitsa sar failing to make a response identify that it is a rectadushti vigara do the rectamosha 
This fundamental is exemplified by Bhagavad Gita. Vata shown to be no Snigdasya Vekishokare. If you come to the Susurda, he is also telling Chidoshna Snigda Ruchadi, Rubakranda is the Yogada, Samek Sadhya and Asidian, the Te Director Prabhobaja, Teshu Srava Idam Rectum. Dear doctors, my message is any condition which is not responding to Snigda Rucha Shida Vushna Ubajara directly. Identify that that may be a recta dominant stage as like recta the other recta start with the recta motrana that is a very important message and coming to the last variety that is a kapadika vada recta how you can diagnose in the practice again kafe staimitya guruda sukti snigdatta sirda kandur manda charuk kandur manda charuk the pain will be comparatively less in case of Kapadika Vadarekta, pain will be more in Vadadika Vadarekta, but stiffness will be more in Kapadika Vadarekta. That is why the secondary manifestation of Vadarekta, Kape is Thaimithyam. What is Thaimithyam? Thaimithyam is Ardha Charma Avanatham, and there will be a comparatively restricted or limited movement. So, my point is a Vadadika Vadarekta will be a painful joint lesion, and a Kapadika Vadarekta may be a swelling oriented, stiffened condition which are very much similar to the frozen stages in our clinical practice. So, whenever there is a Vada combination, think about Ushno Bajara. Whenever there is a Kapha domination, think about Ishno Bajara. And that is why there is a Kashaya in our Kerala called Ashtavargam. Bella, Sakade Rayanda, Shundi, Rasna, Suradrumai, Satinduvara, Lesunai, Ashtavargo, Anilavaha. Which Anilavaha? Kapanu Venda Anilavaha. There was no space to add one more word into the sloga. So Ajaya told Anilabhaka, I would like to tell it can be Kapanu Banda Anilabhaka. Because you see the drugs, Bella, Sagadara, Erenda, Shundi, Rasna, Suradruma, Sinduvara, Lesuna, all are Ushna, Tishna drugs. So my humble message is a painful dominant joint will be a Vata Adhika Vata Rekta, a tenderness with a reddish discoloration may be a Pitta Adhika Vata Rekta, and a frozen condition with less pain and more stiffness may be a Kapadika Vata Rekta. And identifying the fractional analysis is the art of treatment. So dear doctors, next time, don't simply consider that it is Vata Rekta. Diagnose Vata Rekta, Uttana Vata Adhika. Vata Rekta, Gambira Vata Adhika. Vata Rekta, Uttana Kapha Adhika, depending upon the clinical manifestation and identification of the pathogenesis and diagnosis will provide you ample opportunities of wonderful treatment. And that is why Ayurveda believes Chikilsa is Avastha Pradhanam. There is no rheumatoid arthritis turnum, there is no rheumatoid arthritis aristam in Ayurveda. There are so many wonderful Samrath Vigatana tools which are to be applied depending upon the clinical condition. So the Kapadika Vadarekta is having a frozen joint condition. Okay, now from uh, talk to deeper dadus is the progression and I told, I already told that in the inaugural address so many people from the modern uh, fraternity highlighted the role of Ayurveda in preventing the deformity. So again, we have to rise to the situation to prevent the possible uh, damages and these are the Gambira Vada Rekta, you can see all the flexion deformities are there, so neck deformity is there, bondage deformity, are there and if we start the Ayurvedic treatment instead of analgesic in the very early day with the immunoregulators and autoimmune mediated uh, means suppression drugs that is the Rasayana drugs you will be able to prevent and if you are able to prevent the deformities you are really giving a new life to the person because without the movements there is no meaning to the uh, life again you can see the deformities of the patients with uh, different angles I am coming to uh, conclude my speech again in chronic RA, all the ulna deviation. See, the secondary mamsa shosha is also visible. Apart from the joint damage due to the continuous uh, disuse age, uh, uh, disused atrophy, the muscles, you can see the muscles of the hand are already already undergoing atrophy and this will be leading to further pathology. And now see the images. Let us go to the last part of my presentation. And this is the normal sandhi. You can see all the carpal joints can be demarcated. There is no destruction of the joint. All the joint surfaces is well marketed. But when you come to the figure 2, you can see there is increased bone density. Anywhere where there is more uh, bone degeneration, definitely there will be more bone uh, density will be there. And the joint replacement, uh, displacement you can see. And all the clinical features which are suggesting the 
all not deviation so my point is in the x ray please go for the reduced joint space increased bone density and subluxation which are typical diagnostic clues which will appear only in the gambhira vada recta because there is a asti dhadu vigrati and again you can see some another pictures you can see the bony erosions which are white arrow heads you can see these are the bony erosions and joint deformities are white arrows you can see so both the joint and the destruction is there and here you can see you are not able to differentiate the different carpal bones because almost all the carpal bones are fused and there is no movement in the wrist at all janu jangor kadyamsa hasta padanga sandishu if it is a chronic issue then definitely there will be irreversible dhadu vigrati and again you can see the deviation of the fingers you can see all the clinical features of immobilization are there the generation is there so it is very very important and so my uh, point is vada recta versus rheumatoid arthritis is a business which you have to keep with extreme level of clinical intelligence so vada recta is not always rheumatoid arthritis but so many clinical stages of vada recta is are so while formulating the treatment identify that you are using a middle controller and this is the concept of metabolism and agni because all the current modern pathologies are spinning around the axis of autoimmune mediated inflammation and this autoimmune mediated inflammation is nothing other than the other than the clinical impact of agni dear doctors all the current autoimmune pathologies are the agni drushti never think that agni drushti is causing ajirna in the stomach agni drushti can cause different pathologies in multiple dadus one of the example is vada recta so considering and maintaining agni is the key factor in correlating and researching vada recta on the basis of rheumatoid arthritis and what is unique to ayurveda treatment here is prevents the progression of the disease you very well know if you prevent the disease that will be preventing from the uh, deformed stage prevents the possible involvement of extra articular tissue i think ayurvedic people ignore this area we will always focus on the joints only if ra is not treated properly ra can lead to extra articular multi system impact and please focus an attention to the possible damages outside the joint also so don't limit your treatments of vada recta with only drugs which are acting in the sandhi roga or sandhigada vada you have to incorporate drugs from other spectrum because ra is having a multiple system involvement so less disability and deformity and my area is to tell the diagnosis and that is what i have done till now the remaining treatment aspects will be highlighted by the uh, next speakers so the final word before the presentation vada recta is a multi level disease with articular and systemic features accept it it multiple level disease with systemic and uh, local pathology clinical stage helps the diagnosis don't tell that all vada recta will be having same rheumatoid arthritis spectrum clinical stage uttana gambhira is the important thing dosha pattern may vary periodically preventing the progression of the disease is possible through ayurveda the role of agni is important in an autoimmune disease like uh, uh, ra so think about agni samigarana drugs i would like to use the word agni samigarana immune regulators and nidana varivardana is the key word we are living in a sedentary lifestyle with all vidahi aahara viruddha aahara and telling that we want recovery from vada recta so that is also important why i put this cartoon is what is happening with the current nidana varjana somebody is having very good episodes of pain and they take see trouble is i drink lots of beer to try to forget the gout arthritis you know gout arthritis is an arthritis which is caused by pure in metabolism error and all the beverages including the alcohol vidahennam viruddham ja mentioned in our science is precipitating the arthritis so my point is we are using all the things which are analgesic i never i am not blaming any system all the illegal usage of an analgesic without consulting the doctor also they will be going for analgesics and even sometimes steroids and all these things which are done as nidana varjana are becoming nidana they are becoming the viruddha aahara they are becoming the uh, vidahi aahara so please pay attention that you are doing the right nidana varjana and i am coming to the conclusion we started with the old story of this tortoise and rabbit see speed improvement in rheumatology the rewritten old story you know the old tortoise was 
not having enough Ayurvedic education. I think the new Totoro is undergone some BAMS. So he know how to improve his movement. And you know, there are so many techniques to improve the movement. Even as told by the speaker, joint replacement. You can replacement the joint as the Chitranjan Ranavath has said, uh, has done. But it is very costly and a country like India is not in a position to replace the knee joint. Then all of the Indians will be walking like a robots. And it is our duty of the Ayurveda to prevent the joint replacement and to provide the healthy joints through the wonderful healing touch of Ayurveda. So my humble uh, request is, you see, you can see the no more mechanical movements. I would like to tell you that we have to save the indents from rheumatoid arthritis and there may be a stage where all will be moving like robots with all transformed knee joints and what we need is the natural movement in its full rhythm, the natural movements with the full rhythm through Ayurveda that should that is possible through the wonderful uh, researchers and activities of the Ayurveda fraternity. So I would like to prefer this type of movement and not this type of movement. So to get to the, achieve this type of fine movement, I request and I pray to Lord Dhanundari that the avatar, the Ayurveda pharmacy and all other doctors that work together and I congratulate the organizers for uh, conducting such a very wonderful seminar and I am very much thankful to Dr. Ramanohar and all the persons of this institute for giving me a chance to uh, talk over you and once again thanking you and wishing you all uh, clinical success to treat your patient. Let me conclude my words. Thank you. Thank you very much. I am a practitioner and I have a doubt uh, regarding the Uttana in Gambhira. Whether the Uttana in Gambhira uh, stages of Vatarekta can be present in the same patient at the same time in different parts of the body. Because in clinical practice, sometimes in some parts of the body, the Uttana symptoms may be present, and some other parts, it, may, it might have led to the Gambhira stage. And I want okay. your explanation. Thank you, Doctor. That's a very good question, because the same issue we are facing in the clinical practice. The thing is, Every time the Sandhi Nam Sara is important. Say for example, Anguli Sandhis which are affected Uttana Vadarakta, it will take much more time to uh, reach into a Gambhira stage. But the same pathology is initiating in a knee joint with a certain other form, but with a certain other uh, favorable condition, the knee joint and angle joint arthritis will reach the Gambhira Vasta first time because there are so many pressure from the weight bearing joints, there are so many other pathology, the effect of gravity. So my point is, Uttana and Gambhira Vadarakta are always determined in the patient by the lifestyle, by the position of the joint and the degree of pathology occurring in joint. So in my practice also, I have observed that the Anguli Sandhis will be undergoing a Gambhira Vasta in a comparatively low pace compared to the other big joints. Because big joints which are having that much amount of locomotion, especially knee joint. You know, there is a condition called Kroshtuga Shirsha in our Ayurveda. You know, Kroshtuga Shirsha and actually Kroshtuga Shirsha is nothing other than a Bada Bhaiya Vadarekta only. What is that Kroshtuga Shirsha? Vada Shonda Jaj Shofa Janu Madhye Maharuja. He is identifying Janu was the important site because it is a principal weight bearing joint and Stula Kroshtuga Shirsha. So, so whenever there is a chronic deformed arthritis in the Janu Sandhi, the possibility is a Gambira Vasta. So my point is, Uttana Vasta and Gambira Vasta can occur in the same patient in different joints depending upon the usage, pathological state, position and other lifestyle factors of the patients. One more thing, most of, in most of the situations, Uttana Vasta will be continuing for long time in the Anguli Sandhi and Gambira Vasta will be more seen in the weight bearing joints, Janu, Kadi and Gulpa Sandhi. That is a real practical observation. Thank you. Excuse me, sir. Throughout your uh, uh, lecture, you have mentioned all the, uh, nicely you have mentioned the pathology of the things. Why you are not taken? If you take a rheumatoid arthritis, one and the other condition, we see the amalakshana in all the conditions. Why you are not elaborated amalakshanas? Only you have considered vata, pitta and kapha, mainly tridosha and the things. Why you are not considered yeah. amalakshana in these conditions? Okay, thank you, doctor. See, I already, I had given you enough importance to the concept of agni. I told you, you know, you have to being a, there was some typical slide, being a madhyama roga marga, I think I will put that slide for your uh, knowledge. I told about the role of agni also. I think it is coming here. And see, in in Vadarekta, definitely there can be a role of Agni, but compared to Amavata and other disease. See, this is the slide. So you can see, 
the role of agni in a maroga marga which is in coming in madhyama that is what i am telling you know the role of ama will be different in kosta roga madhyama roga and saga roga and badarakta is a disease which is definitely manifesting in the uh, uh, sandhis which is coming under madhyama roga marga you have to play important role to the dhatogini only i want to convey more importance to dhatogini rather than kosta agni when you come to the ama vata when you come to the Amavada, you are getting more prominent the Kosh Rashana. Can you tell what is Amavada clinical feature? Anga Martha, Ariji Tishna, Alasyam, Gauravam, Jora, Apaga, Sunada, Manganam. The first line is exclusively reserved for Kosta only. I would like to come to the Madhavanadana, Anga Martha, Ariji, Trishna, Alasyam, Gauravam, Jora. Not at all joint features. All clinical features are to the costa and second line only apaga sunada manga nam avarasya. But when you come to the vada recta, acharya is giving more focus to the dhadus, which are typically manifesting in the sandhis only. If you come through all the vada recta, I had told you the clinical features of all vada recta, you can never get any so any get any jora any aruji. But as just like any other disease, a patient of vada recta, if he undergoes a lifestyle of ama, he may develop. Definitely the AMA complaint. It doesn't mean that AMA is having a starting pathology in Vada Recta. And I would like to talk any level because AMA Vada is a Resap Pradosha Javyadi and Vada Recta is a Recta Pradosha Javyadi. And that is why AMA Vada Chigilsa is Lengana and Vada Recta Chigilsa is Recta Motana. In AMA Vada we use Charavasti, in Vada Recta we use Tiravasti. I think you are getting. So in the Samaratya Vada Rekta, you are getting the more importance of Vada and Rekta. Clearly told by Vada, I mean, Saraga. Vayur Vivarte Varte Se Rekte Navirido Padi Krishnam Sandushaye Direktam Tatnyayam Vada Sondam. The combination of Ama with the Rekta is comparatively less. But just like you told, if a particular patient who is having Vada Rekta is undergoing Divasopana, Hidasana, Guru Vahara, there can be a Vada, in, there can be an Ama involvement and then automatically we will be going for Kapha Diga Vada Rekta Chikilsa. Don't worry. The answer is there in the Samhita, Kapha Diga Vada Rekta Chikilsa is applicable to the Vada Rekta patient with the Kapha Nibandha. Because what is Kapha Nibandha? Again, I can tell you what is Kapha Nibandha Vada Rekta? Kapha Saimitya Guruda. Supti Snigdatta Shidada. This is the slide. See, Kafe Saimitya Guruda, Gaurava, Supti, etc. are there. In such a condition, dear doctor, the diagnosis is Kafadiga Vada Rekta and you will be going for Kapagara Chikilsa. I told you the example of Ashtavargan Kashayam, I think. I think I mentioned what is that Bella, Sakadera, Eranda, Shundi, Rasna, Suratruma, Sasindu Vara, Lesune, Ashtavargo, Anilabaha. All the drugs in Ashtavarga are Divana Padana, Ushna Tishna. So my concluding remark is, in the Samaratya of Vada Rekta, more pathology is attributed to the Rekta by the scholars and due to the change in the lifestyle, anybody can involve AMA and whenever there is an AMA involvement in Vada Rekta, you need not call it as AMA Rekta, you can go for the Kapadiga Vada Rekta Chikilsa. Thank you. Sir, Vela is not Ushna and Tishna, it was just see that. What, sir? Bela is not Tushna and the Tishna, it is Sita. Yes, sir, but Bela is having very good Vadagara property because it is having no roots of the at all. And you know, Bela is having so many other Vadagara activity, it is Belia only. Narish and Bela is always, always giving. like Shundiadis will improve the bio available to the Bela. And to get a Vadagara drug, you need not always get a Ushna Vidya. Even though Bella is not that having Ushnaviriya, it is having Snigdala property and that is why we are prescribing Bella even in Abana Vaigunya condition. In Garbini, you know, in Garba Sosha condition, whenever you are getting about IUGR, Indra Uterine Growth Retardation, in order to nourish the fetus, we are giving Bella Chida only. So my point is, when Bella is combined with other drugs like Sagadara, Erenda, Shundi, Rasna, it will be providing Vadagara. So you cannot tell that all the drugs which are doing Vadagara should be Ushnaviya because it's the combination matter. Some drugs will work singly, some drugs will, will work in combo. That is, Samudaya Prabhava is there. When some drugs are combined with some other drugs, the pharmacological effect will be more. And another thing is, again, you can think about different kalpanas also. There are so many kalpanas. Bela, Punyanamadi, drug we are giving. And Rasna, Guduji, Merendam, Devadaru, Mahoshadam. So many drugs are there. All the drugs need not be having Ushnaviriya to pacify Vata. 
That is true, but you are telling every drug is Ushna Vija. Not like that, sir. Ushna Vija yeah. means it is. Ah, no, I think you are catching my word. Yeah. That is okay, okay. Then it is correct, absolutely right. Yeah. I thought that you are talking with the clinics. You caught my word. Okay, that is absolutely correct. Thank you. No I am very thankful because you noted that my each and every word. Thank you. Disease to disease. There is a Nidana Artha Karoga concept. Yes, yes, it is there. So, how to understand whether for Vadarakta also is there any background that like a Grahani and all this is leading to the Vadarakta thing? See, actually, uh, I don't think that that is much applicable because a patient with the Vadarakta can lead to some other pathology and Tal Yachanam Bhavishyadaha Kusta Samam. That is one idea. You may be knowing if you come to the Vadarakta, it is mentioned that uh, Lakshanam Bhavishyadaha is Kusta Sama, but only to that level it is having similarity. You cannot tell that any other disease which is having a previous occurrence will be having Vadarakta. But to satisfy the Ayurvedic anxiety, Ayurvedic anxiety means all the drugs will be having some Agnimandya property, there can be a relation. So there can be some relation with any other Rekta mediated pathology, but all Rekta mediated pathology need not end in secondary Vadarakta. So I cannot tell you a particular disease which is the Nidana Kartrutva of Vadarakta, but there can be a resemblance of Kushta Roga where Rekta Dushti and Rekta Vaha Dushti is more applicable. When you come to the uh, Kushta Roga, it is clearly mentioned that it is a pure Rekta Vaha Dushti. Vidahini, Annapanani, Snigdoshnani, Dravanija, Rekta Vahini Dushyendi, Pajadamcha, Atapa, Analo. But the same thing is applicable to Vada Rekta only with the contribution from Vada Lair, Sita Lair. So you cannot tell that even Kushta will also lead to Vada Rekta. Only up to the level of Purva Ruba, Sana Samsriya, it is same. And after Sana Samsriya, wonderfully Charaka is telling that Parvasu Apagidam Kurutam Vakratva Davadishtadi. That is my simple message. A disease which is having a strong Rekta domination need not become Vada Rekta until and unless there is a Sana Samsriya in Sandhi is because Vakratvadu. He is Taraga is telling Parvasu Avagidam Kruddham Vakratvadu Avadishtadi. So my point is I am not in a position to tell you that there is a Karta, there is a Karana as another disease for Vada Rekta but there will be an element of resemblance of Rekta Vaha Dushti up to Kushta level between Vada Rekta and Amvada. So Vada Rekta and sorry Kushta. Vata Purna Dhridis Parsham Shobham Sandhi Gado Anilaha Prasaran Agunjaniyo Pravartimsa Vedana mentioned by Vagbada. And when you come to the Vata Rekta, you are getting even involvement of the Rekta Vaha Srodas, arteries, vessels and nature of pain itself is different. But there is an important finding, Gambira Vata Rekta will more or less mimic Sandhi Gado Vata. I am telling a very unique concept, please pay attention doctors. Gembira Vada Rekta will be more or less similar to Sandhigada Vada because there will not be much Uttan Lashana, only joint destruction. So all Gembira Vada Rekta will become what? Vada dominant. Again, in order to satisfy your uh, this uh, Trishna, I will tell one more point. You consider Ama Vada, Vada Rekta, Sandhigada Vada. These three are the Ayurvedic locomotor disease. Okay. Ama Vada, Vada Rekta, Sandhigada Vada. And Nirama Geda, Ama Vada. Is somewhat equal unto Gambira Vada Rekta, is somewhat equal unto Sandhigada Vada. I think you are getting me. Nirama stage of Ama Vada hyphen, Gambira Vada Rekta hyphen, Sandhigada Vada, because in all the three, Vada Dosha is prominent and treatment is Velya Brahmana to the tissues. Clear? So that is a typical area where you can compromise. In the initial manifestation, Vada Rekta will be having definite Rekta Lakshanas in the patient, where are in case of Sandhigata Vada, there will not be any contribution from the Rekta Thadu. And more or less in Vada Rekta, you need Siddha Vakrama also to some extent. But in uh, Sandhigata Vada, you need extreme Vada Kara treatment. We consider uh, Vata Rekta and Rekta Gata Vata. Hmm. In Vata Rekta, both Rekta and Vata increase and in... Uh, uh, Rekta Vada is understood. Uh, Vata is increased. So based on clinical feature in a patient, how can you differentiate it? Better? Totally different, my dear. Totally different. If you had asked about Rekta Vada, I would have been agreed with you. Because Rekta Gada Vada, there is no obstruction to the Vada. When you come to the Vada Rekta, I told you, Rekta Margam Nihandhyasu Chaga Sandishu Maruda Nivisyam Anyonyam Avarya. This Anyonyam Avarya, mutual obstruction of the Vada and Rekta are there in Vada Rekta only. And that is why other is telling, do the treatment of Vada Rekta in Rekta Varda Vada. But when you come to the Rekta Gada Vada, you are getting so many clinical features, including hypertension. Rekta, Tivra, Aruji, Sopa, Tapa, Raga, Vivarnada, Arushi, Annasya, Vishtamba, Maruji, Krishadabharam. 
Vekta gada vada is the manifestation of vada when seated in Vekta. But in vada recta, recta vridhi occurs first. Vitiated recta is obstructing vada. Obstructed vada does secondary dushti to recta. I think you are getting me. Clearly follow me. In recta gada vada, vitiated vada does sana samsriya in recta only. You are getting some dermatological fishes. Recta, soba, taba, raga, vivarnata. But when you come to the Vada Recta, the primary stage is Recta Vitiation. Recta Vitiation will cause Vada obstruction. Vada will get vitiated and this vitiated Vada will get more power and cause secondary Dushti to Recta. This is what is called Anunya Varana. And that is why in Vada Recta you are getting Tuggada complaints, Sandhigada complaints. Am I right? But when you come to the Recta Gada Vada, you are not at all getting any secondary Recta Dushti by Vada. Because recta is not vitiating vada. I think you are getting me. That is the fundamental difference between recta gada vada and vada recta.